Steve Jobs' ideas revolutionized life in the 20th and 21st century, and he had become a part of the history of technological development. Apple, whose market value exceeds the unbelievable amount of a billion dollars, was created by Steve Jobs and his friend Steve Wozniak in a garage. It's never been a secret that this confident genius and visionary was not the easiest person to live with. He was demanding and complicated, and in private, he was also a distant father who did not want to have anything to do with his daughter. His eldest child released a book and exposed the truth about her father. What was her childhood like? Why didn't her father want to keep in touch with her? And what do his widow and three other children think about it? Stay with me to find out the unbelievable facts about Steve Jobs. Eight years ago, Steve Jobs lost his battle with cancer at the age of 56, and it was mainly after his death that the details of his private life began to surface. But to get the full picture, let's start from the very beginning. Stephen Paul Jobs was born on February 24, 1955 in San Francisco. He was the child of a pair of students who gave him up for adoption right after he was born. That is how little Steve ended up at Paul and Clary Jobs' home in Mountain View, California. His biological father, Abdul Fattah Jandali, was from Syria, and his mother, Joanne Scheibel, was half German and half Swiss. Years later, when he was an adult, Steve had found his biological mother, reunited with her, and he's had a good relationship with his sister Mona, who was born after his parents gave him up for adoption. And the sister found their father, who had abandoned his family. It turned out that he ran a restaurant where all the successful people working in the technology area came for lunch. Even Steve was there. Because of that, the son of the father met by accident and even shook hands, but this didn't change Steve's attitude, who still didn't want to have anything to do with his biological father, mainly because he abandoned his family. And because of that, I'm thinking one thing. Did his family situation in some way have a negative influence on Jobs' relationship with people? Is it why he was such a peculiar father to his own daughter? Or maybe he was just a genius who loved his job the most and always put it first and simply was just a bit weird? What do you think? Because it actually may be true that Jobs probably didn't love anyone as much as his company and he treated it as his most important child. And how was Apple founded? In 1976, the 21-year-old Steve Jobs, together with Steve Wozniak, founded Apple, producing the Apple I personal computer. A year later, by selling Apple II, the two gained great fame and wealth on the home computer market, and thanks to their very successful mass-produced computer, Apple became one of the most important enterprises. It was then that Lisa Brennan Jobs was born. She was the result of his five-year relationship with the painter, Chris Ann Brennan. The woman became pregnant shortly before their breakup, and Steve, since the beginning, wouldn't admit that it was his child. Despite this, they both chose her name, Lisa, while sitting with the newborn in the fields on a blanket. But anyway, Jobs denied being the father, and he stood by it for years. In the year when the child was conceived, Apple began working on a new personal computer, one of the first in the world that offered a graphic user interface and a mouse. And a few years later, when it was launched, it turned out that its name was Apple Lisa. The funny thing is that Brennan never gave Jobs permission to use the baby's name for a computer, so he worked with his team to come up with an alternative explanation for the Apple Lisa, which was Local Integrated Software Architecture. The now adult Lisa has recently released a book, but she has written publications about her father before. And in her latest book, Small Fry, she wasn't trying to be very considerate about her relationship with Steve. She reveals many details about the family and the difficult conditions in which she grew up, confessing to feeling lonely and abandoned. Lisa explained that her father was not interested in what was happening with her for the first two years of her life and he didn't pay child support. Her mother had a hard time making ends meet without having a permanent job or her own apartment. Those were the early days of Apple and Jobs completely devoted himself to the company. Only when the case went to court and DNA tests showed a nearly 95% probability of paternity between him and the girl, his attitude changed a little bit, but not as much as you might expect. Obviously, he didn't become a loving dad overnight. He visited his daughter after the court ordered him to pay child support. The girl was two years old, but he still didn't feel his role of the dad. So this was the beginning of their painful and complicated relationship. In the meantime, Apple entered the New York Stock Exchange, and the net worth of Jobs grew to over $200 million by the time he was 25 years old. And according to the court's decision, he was supposed to pay only $385 of child support. But the multimillionaire decided to be very generous, and instead of that, he gave Lisa $500 a month. How nice of him. When in 1983, Apple released the more advanced computer called Lisa, an article appeared in Time magazine about Jobs, who became the person of the year, in which the topic of the daughter was raised. The Apple co-founder stated in his response to that article that 28% of the male population of the United States could be the father. Despite these harsh words, he supposedly carried his daughter's picture in his wallet. But when someone asked about it, he reportedly said that it's not his child, but she didn't have a father, so he tried to be with her and support her. That's quite the opposite of the reality, right? 
In her book, Lisa doesn't hide that she was hurt by the fact that Steve, instead of raising her, preferred to build machines that would change the world. But when in the mid-1980s, he and the then-CEO of Apple clashed and Jobs was forced to leave the company, he started to spend more time with his daughter. He would even take her rollerblading and stuff. He didn't talk to her that much, though. And according to Lisa, her father was hiding deep sadness, and he had a very distant and superior attitude. And the only thing she dreamed of was being close to him and finally being noticed by him. However, when she was looking at him, she saw all the positive things in him, but she found it difficult to find a place for herself in his life. When he rejected her, she only wanted to be closer to him. The daughter of the Apple co-founder said that when he achieved another success, he distanced himself from her. But in times of professional failures, he became closer to her. After leaving Apple, Jobs founded a new company, Next, and in 1986, he funded the computer animation studio Lucasfilm, from which an independent animation studio, Pixar, was created, and later he became the CEO. Pixar movies were the first films in the history of cinematography to be created entirely using computer technology. And the movies you can associate the studio with are such productions as Toy Story, Finding Nemo, Monsters, Inc., and Cars. And while Steve was building his position in the market from scratch, he quickly achieved another financial success and more recognition, which confirmed that he's a true visionary with amazing business skills. Lisa confessed that she and her mother couldn't find a place with good living conditions, so they often moved. And when Steve started to show more interest in his daughter, she spent her childhood split between two worlds. She would go on vacation with him, and she even lived with him for a while. One moment she was in a huge mansion with a pool and lots of empty modern space surrounded by loneliness and silence from her father, and then she came back to living in poverty with her loud but loving mother. Lisa confessed in one of her books that when she was in the first place, she was missing the other, and the other way around. In his daughter's memories, Jobs is an unpredictable man who appeared and disappeared. She admitted that his behavior frustrated and fascinated her at the same time. Steve was full of contradictions. When he was in a good mood, he was full of positive energy, which was really contagious. But at the same time, he could be ruthless, brutally honest, and cold. At home, he often fooled around, playing the guitar and singing to his daughter, and at other times, he completely ignored her. Lisa confessed that her father's contradictions were visible at every turn. He was rich, but he had holes in his pants. He was famous, but he seemed lonely. Everyone forgave him all his extreme quirks because despite all this, he was a genius, and sometimes he was nice. In her book, Lisa wrote that when she and her mother finally found a perfect house and asked Steve to help them buy it, he liked the building so much that he decided to buy it for himself, and he moved in there with his wife Laureen Powell shortly after their wedding. It was with this woman that he started a family and had three children, a son and two daughters. Steve was a visionary perfectionist, both professionally and privately. He always wanted everything to look the way he had imagined, so it seems that only the unplanned daughter was a flaw in the image of the genius. As Lisa said, she was a stain on the spectacular path of his career, and her story didn't match the flawless narrative he wanted to create about himself. Lisa's mother, Steve's first love, spent her youth raising their daughter, constantly looking for her place on earth and often changing partners. Over time, she became a frustrated woman, which led to violent arguments between her and her daughter, in which she often lost control. This relationship was something that no young and emotionally broken girl should go through. At one point, Steve insisted that Lisa live with him and give the new family a chance. He didn't want her to see her mom, so for half a year, the mother and daughter only contacted by phone. It was a difficult decision because, although she loved her mother, she wanted to free herself from her and experience a life with her father, so she agreed with what he wanted. Jobs wasn't a typical father. There was something of a hippie in him. He didn't punish her, for example, for smoking. He himself didn't go to college, so he didn't want that for his daughter. So when she got into Harvard, he was less than happy with that fact. He wanted her to stay with her family so that she could take care of her younger siblings and become closer to them. And despite the huge fortune, in many situations, he wouldn't give her pocket money. As Lisa mentioned in her book, for example, he wouldn't buy her a new couch and didn't fix the heating in her room. Meanwhile, he was buying new cars for himself. In the meantime, Apple, without its great leader, began to experience big problems and went into bankruptcy. The company brought the Apple founder back in 1996. At that time, the first iMac was released. And under Steve's management, the company created the iPod, the iTunes Store, and the range of iPhones and iPads. With his amazing ideas, Jobs brought the company back to its feet in a few years, restoring its prestige and delivering products that millions of people around the world continue to buy. Jobs' name was a brand in itself. That's why Lisa in her books admitted that she had no regrets about using her last name and at least once benefit from her father's name. For instance, when she applied for college, Going to university was a chance for her to escape the difficult and toxic Steve and the mother who wasn't coping well with her life. As it turned out, Jobs couldn't forgive Lisa for her decision to put education first and leave her family. 
so he quickly stopped paying the tuition. And when she asked the university for a scholarship, it turned out that it was only awarded to those who were really in need. And thanks to her last name, she was far from it. She graduated only thanks to the financial help from Steve's neighbors who took care of her when Jobs neglected her. When Lisa was an adult, she saw her father once a year. Although she was his firstborn child, the founder of Apple officially had three children, not four, because the name Lisa never appeared in the press with his last name. When Steve was diagnosed with cancer, she started visiting him more often. Lisa Brennan Jobs accompanied her father in his last moments, even though he once didn't want anything to do with his daughter. Not long before his death, he asked her to visit him when his kids and wife wouldn't be home. Then, he reportedly apologized to her. As the woman admitted, he was surprisingly welcoming and even had tears running down his cheeks. He said goodbye to his daughter and apologized for not being there for her when she needed it. The author of Jobs' biography, Walter Isaacson, wrote that Jobs regretted that he hadn't fixed his relationship with his daughter differently. He admitted that when she was born, he just couldn't imagine himself as a father, and he did what he could to not become that. When Lisa recalled her sad childhood, she admitted that she realized very late how lucky she was to have met him and spent time with him, before he became incredibly famous and when he was still strong enough to jump on the trampoline and ride on roller skates. She also confessed that although she had thought all her childhood that Steve spent time with everyone but her, now she's not so sure of it. Sad memories are what prevailed in Lisa's autobiography. She's now 41 years old, and in her book, we basically can read only about these difficult moments with Steve. These are the times in which she felt rejected, in which she indirectly heard that she wouldn't receive anything from him. For years, she considered herself the bad part of the story of a genius. Another image of Jobs is presented by the widow of the businessman, Laureen Powell Jobs, as well as his sister, Mona Simpson. The women issued a joint statement in which they opposed Lisa's version, saying that they read her book with great sadness, which is different from the memories of those times they have, and that this isn't the husband, father, and brother they knew. According to Jobs' widow, he loved Lisa and later he regretted that he was absent in her early childhood. And everyone, including Steve's other three children, are grateful for all the years they'd spent as a family. As reported by the press, after the death of her father, Lisa inherited several million dollars, because he included her in his will. However, the job's fortune and legacy belong to his wife, who efficiently manages it and significantly increased their wealth. Is it because Lisa admitted that if she had the right, she would donate billions to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? This is a really interesting choice when you think of the rivalry between the two giants. Well, Steve Jobs was undoubtedly a very unique and difficult man to live with. What do you guys think about the words of his daughter Lisa Brennan Jobs? Do you think she's telling the truth? Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with Karyosips. See you.